This short YouTube video is a summary presentation of the booklet now shown on the screen entitled A Commentary on the Theology of the Body. The booklet refers to numerous passages from St. John Paul's Theology of the Body and offers comments on them. We will now begin the summary presentation. Have commentaries missed out on or overlooked the central point of St. John Paul's Theology of the Body? The main reason for undertaking this particular study on St. John Paul's book, The Theology of the Body, is to highlight something very important in his writings, and maybe even his main point, which commentators appear to have either overlooked or missed. This point concerns the nuptial state of the body which St. John Paul describes the saints will experience in the resurrection in heaven. As will be seen from several passages of the theology of the body referred to in this study, verbatim passages. St. John Paul repeatedly presents the case and postulates the position that in the resurrection, each of us, whether single, married or celibate, will exist eternally in that nuptial and virginal state intended by God for the first couple in the beginning. We will not, therefore, according to St. John Paul, exist on our own in the resurrection as male or female, a position that is often assumed, but rather in that nuptial state in an eternal communion of persons which mirrors the communion of love in the persons of the Blessed Trinity. Towards the end of the Theology of the Body, St. John Paul sums up in a few words that which he consistently refers to throughout his whole thesis and is at the heart of his study, namely that Christ's redeeming love for each and every one of us has a spousal character and meaning, linked to the truth of the unity of the spouses in the beginning. St. John Paul states that the Saviour of the world came down from heaven to redeem mankind, and the redemption he has won for us is nuptial in its very essence. It has, as he states, a spousal character and meaning. What was lost in the beginning, that is, the nuptial state of innocence and love which God intended for our first parents in the Garden of Eden, and for all humanity, the truth about the unity of the spouses, of being naked and unashamed, is restored to us in the nuptial love which Christ has revealed for his bride, the Church. This is the grace which Christ, our Redeemer, has won for all humanity. It is, as stated above by St. John Paul, spousal in nature. St. John Paul sees both Christ's love for his bride and the love of the spouses which he has redeemed as inseparably united. The first is revealed in the second, and the second reveals the first. It is not therefore a question, as is often assumed, of the first supplanting the second, that is of Christ's love for his bride supplanting that of the spouses, but rather of the first saving and living in the second. This saving nuptial truth applies to every male and female, whether they be married, single, or professing the vow of celibacy. They will, St. John Paul proposes, experience in their bodies in the resurrection in heaven, a nuptial communion of love in the virginal state with their respective spouse in accordance with that life of communion in the Blessed Trinity. This point is key to our study here, which considers the question, what, according to St. John Paul, is the nuptial joy that the saints will experience in the resurrection of the body in heaven? For commenting on the theology of the body, several scholars give the impression that the wedding feast in heaven to which Christ is inviting us in the resurrection, supplants and replaces that which God has brought together on earth. Marriage, or more properly speaking, the nuptial love of the couple, therefore, it is incorrectly assumed, has ended. 
the wedding feast of Christ has replaced and supplanted that which God brought together on earth. The first has replaced the second, for the second no longer has any place. This, it is strongly and respectfully proposed, is not what St. John Paul has written. Rather, St. John Paul teaches, as it will be seen from the numerous passages of the theology of the body referred to in this commentary. It is not a question of a celebration of one wedding over the other, namely of Christ's wedding over that which God has brought together on earth, but it is the celebration of both, and not only both in an unrelated manner, but of both coexisting together, with the wedding of every spousal couple brought eternally into the wedding feast of Christ, made members of his body and living stones in the new temple in heaven. However, the form of marriage that Christ now celebrates in heaven is virginal, according to but elevating the primordial sacrament which God intended for the first couple in the beginning. This new nuptial state, which is celebrated in heaven, was, according to St. John Paul, anticipated in the nuptial but virginal communion of Mary and Joseph. This is why St. John Paul sees, as will be shown later, the vow of celibacy for the kingdom of heaven as being of a higher nuptial state than that of married couples. For celibacy, for the sake of heaven, points to that form of marriage which awaits the saints in heaven. Celibacy, therefore, according to this understanding, points to marriage and not away from it. And everybody, whether single, married or celibate, is invited to this true and eternal wedding feast. One point must be emphasised with respect to St. John Paul's study, that is, the hope which he refers to throughout the theology of the body is real. St. John Paul does not merely use figurative language that speaks only with symbolic intent, for he describes something real that lies ahead for us in the resurrection, a hope we can grasp onto. For this hope will be revealed in the body in tangible form, even as the body in the resurrection is spiritualized. It means, as is stated in the front cover of St. John Paul's book, that human love has a place in the divine plan. For just as God had a real plan for the first couple in the Garden of Eden, so too God extends the same grace in bodily form for every couple he has predestined in Christ for eternal love. We become members of Christ's body and Christ's body is real. Some might object to this real nuptial hope, stating that what is presented in the theology of the body should only be read with figurative intent. For, it will be suggested, the account of the first couple in Genesis, Adam and Eve, has no historical foundation, and so any development by St. John Paul on this great mystery in the beginning is likewise presented without historical or bodily intent. This position could not be further from the truth, for even if someone was to object to what is clearly evident in his writings, the Church firmly teaches in the objective reality of the original innocence of the first couple in Paradise, a state that was real but which was subsequently lost on account of the fall. The reality of both the existence and unity of the first couple in St. John Paul's mind must therefore be without question. In a series of video recordings entitled Marriage in the Early Chapters of Genesis, recently uploaded onto YouTube, the reality of the nuptial union of the first couple in the Garden of Eden was so real that it, in fact, it is proposed, carried on after Adam and Eve for a number of other blessed couples up to the time of Abram, albeit in the fallen state of being subject to 
concupiscence and death, at which time it ended. This, it is suggested in the series of videos, is what the inspired author of Genesis, traditionally held to be Moses, wishes the reader to see. The biblical evidence for this real nuptial state is overwhelming and indicates that the blessing with which God blessed humanity in the beginning was real. This real nuptial state in the beginning points to that future nuptial state which St. John Paul presents in the theology of the body and, please God, lies ahead for all of us on account of the redeeming sacrifice of Christ. For on Mount Calvary, in the blood and water which flowed forth from the side of Christ on the cross, as the new Eve formed from the side of the new Adam, the nuptial gates of paradise have been reopened. We are reminded of the consoling words of Christ spoken on the cross to the repentant thief. Today, I promise you, you will be with me in paradise. This is the hope we all possess, and this hope presented in the writings of St. John Paul, as stated above, is real. If anyone is interested in getting a copy of this booklet, please see the contact details below.